Hi everyone, this is the Outdoor Influence. I'm Tom from Nomad and today we're going to be looking at making natural cordage from willow bark. We live on a small holding in North Wales um, and due to lockdown all of our adventures recently have been within within the confines of our, of our land but we are very lucky. We have plenty of room for us to feel like we're getting out into nature and there's plenty of space for the kids to play. Um, so in this field um, you'll see that we've been planting willow um, since we arrived here seven years ago um, with the view to it uh, being uh, biofuel and um, so when the trees get bigger we we kind of coppice them and then we dry out the wood and use that for fuel in the winter. So this might sound like a bit of a strange admission, but um, I really love string, I really love rope. Um, I find it endlessly useful and in my jobs as an outdoor instructor um, and as a tree surgeon, I'm, I'm never too far away from a rope. So um, I feel like it is, it is my, my tool of choice for many things. Um, and so making string from a, a raw and natural material uh, is an interesting challenge to me um, and I'm doing this today with the with the view to hopefully using it on a bow drill um, to light a fire. Um, currently I'm using um, lawnmower starter cord and uh, I want to create a kit that is fully fully from the earth and fully from made from natural materials. So we're just here in the in our little, um, I guess it's a thicket really, of willow um, and it's quite dense. Uh, this field was very wet when we first got here and um, we saw it as a good uh, opportunity to dry out the ground but also create some fuel for the winter um, and each season we plant maybe another hundred or so trees um, uh, which is also, which also feels good in terms of offsetting our, our carbon. Um, yeah, so this is where we're going to be taking the willow from, one of these trees. So I'm just going to be looking for um, the appropriate branch. We want something that is not very knotty and is reasonably straight. So let's see what we can find here. So I think this one is going to be uh, the piece that we're going to take. As you can see down here, we've already taken a few, um, a few stems from here in the past. Uh, and we're going to take this thick one out here. It's it's completely not free all the way up to there um, so we've got a good I don't know maybe seven or eight feet of undisturbed back which is what we need for the for the rope so I'm just gonna use uh, this is a silky saw Okay, so I'm going to cut the, the head off here. These shoots we can just nip off and push back into the ground and in a couple of years they'll become an established tree. Um, so I just wanted to mention that this is actually our first ever video that we're making and uh, so uh, just testing the capabilities of the camera and, and the equipment that we have. So uh, bear with us if it's a bit shaky and a bit a bit unprofessional it's because we're learning as we go and um, uh, it's the way that I learn best is just by having a go and, and making mistakes I hope you enjoy uh, enjoy the journey of us uh, growing and and hopefully um, establishing this 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 video blog so uh, I hope you enjoy it and I welcome you along uh, on this journey with us uh, and to subscribe <laughs> if you want um, and uh, give us a little like if, if you found this entertaining. So I'm just going to be cutting off uh, these these thin shoots. Um, this one's possibly too thin, it might not take, but I'll do it anyway. And what you want to do 
is to cut roughly a two foot length um, from the base of the stem and then we can just you can just push that into the ground and it will turn into a tree it will grow from from this shoot and in some cases um, willow can put on um, like a centimeter a day of growth which means in a month it's possible it, for some trees to grow like a foot in foot in height it's pretty amazing really but it's, it's a good um, it's a good biofuel because it grows real quick so we're just going to stick these last remaining willow here um, our greenhouse there gets battered from the prevailing wind uh, mainly through the winter so uh, we're just going to put these last through here a few here and hope they establish Okay, so what I'm using here is um, a closed opinel knife and I'm using the back of the blade. It's kind of like the safest thing I can think of, of, of using. And we're scraping off this outer bark layer um, down to this pale green. So th there's kind of two layers. There's the dark green and then there's the, the pale green, almost white. And it's the, the whitey light color that we want to keep. done about two feet of the of the branch so far and um, this is a good length for the fibers uh, for when you are twisting the twisting the fibers into the string so I'm just going to cut it off here and then I'm going to split this inner bark off of the, the stick Whilst I was doing that, I found that the back of the closed silky saw blade was um, was actually really good as well at getting the outer bark off. And I'm just going to use this now to just finish off these few patches where there's still some of the uh, bark on there. It's really good to have the the blade closed when you're using these because um, it's obviously it's safer. Do this with any knife really the back of any knife will probably do um, but you don't want to be using the sharp side because you might uh, might dig too far into the back and damage the layer that you actually want to preserve for this uh, for making the cordage um, so what I'm going to do now is using my up and down knife just going to cut down the length of the, the stick making sure I'm going through that outer layer into the hardwood in the middle like that and then just gotta slowly slowly peel this away this is a slow process if you rush it you're most likely gonna ruin it you'll see here it's just like Slowly, slowly peeling off, 
splitting away from that cut that you just made. This is the the whole length of the the stick peeled off, and this is the inner bark that we need for making the uh, for making cordage. Uh, and the last part of the process that we're going to do today with the uh, willow bark is just slowly tearing tearing this down. Um, just going along the grain of the bark. So I've torn this into like a one centimeter wide strip. I'm then going to tear this into into like a half centimeter long strip, and I'm just going to do this for the whole um, the whole sheet of this back. And um, when this is complete, when I've ripped this completely down. Um, we need to then boil this bark for about an hour um, in water with a handful of uh, wood fire ash in it. Um, and that's a good treatment for the fibres, makes them supple and it means that when you go to do the twisting part of the, of the cordage making that they don't snap. So it's now three weeks later, um, had a bit of a break uh, and we've had a few other jobs to do um, here on this small holding. Uh, uh, today we have another beautiful day of weather um, and uh, we're going to look at turning the fibres that we processed and turning it into cordage today. So for the next part of the process obviously you need your fibres and we're going to be straightening them out and. Uh, just checking that we've got no other uh, extra bits of bark on it um, and also you need some water so I've got a bowl of water here and what we're going to do is um, we'll dip the fibres in the water it helps them it makes them more pliable um, and it helps us be able to pick off some of these extra bits of the the outer bark that are still remaining on there what you want to be looking out for are pieces like this where there's still a little bit of the, the outer bark still on there and you can just peel it off quite easily with your nail uh, if it doesn't come off you can dip it in the water and that will loosen it off a bit more and it should come off easier with your nail but it's important that before you start the twisting process that you do um, get those little extra bits off because it will make the, the fibres snap when you come to twisting them so once you've got any of the excess bark off the outside, uh, dip it in the water and just rub the water into the fibres again. The next part is uh, I'll introduce the twisting method, which is the same for um, when you do um, with lime bark and if you do it with uh, nettles, it's the same process that you use for that. Um, it's a really simple and quite therapeutic twisting method and I'll explain that now. So to begin, um, to begin the twisting, you need to find a, a longish piece. This is about a foot long, 30 centimeters, 
and uh, fold it so that you have one one strand longer than the other. So this one is about five centimeters or two inches or so longer than the other strand. So I don't know if you can see that one's longer than the other. And you go to the the bent end or what what you'd call as the bite, I guess. And um, so what I'm doing here is I'm I'm twisting it, twisting the fibers until a little kink starts. And what I'm doing is with my right hand I'm twisting, uh, twisting it so that my uh, index finger is going away from me and my thumb is coming towards me. Um, and so uh, you can also do the opposite with the other fingers and you get a kink there where the fibers have twisted in the opposite directions. So grab that kink, grab that kink and then have the fibers coming out to uh, to your working hand. So if you're right-handed, you would have the fibers pointing towards your right hand. So what I've done here is I've created that kink that I was talking about. And you create that by twisting the fibers in opposite directions. And then you take that, I take it in my left hand because I'm right-handed and I'm gonna do most of the work with my right hand. So then what you do is you twist what we'll call the top strand. You twist it, maybe maybe like two twists, one, two, and then you tuck it over and you take this the what was the lower strand up. And then you work on the upper strand. So you're always doing the twisting on the upper strand. So then you do two more twists on there, one, two, and you take that over the front and you take what was then the lower strand back up to the top twist one two and then flick over okay and then you always pinch the work you've already done with this hand so one two and twist one two twist one two twist so remember to always do the twisting of the single strand on the top using the top strand one two and then when you've done those two twists, you fold it over the bottom one and you twist up what was the lower strand to become the upper strand. And then you do your two twists on there. One, two, and twist. One, two, twist. And as you can see there now, you can see you get a very fine, very neat uh, piece of cordage. Okay so I've got to the point now where uh, I've got to get to the ends of my strands um, so what you do is when you get to about, an, about an inch or two, two and a bit centimeters away from the end of one of your strands uh, you just simply you get another one of your strands and you double it up like that. Um, so put the end right into the uh, where the two where the two strands are meeting and you just do the twisting process with both so one two and flip it over one two flip it over one two flip it over and you can hardly tell really that that second piece is there so um I'm going to just speed through this and uh, I'll be back with you in a minute. So it gets to the point where you can get pretty quick at it. So this has taken me maybe 10 minutes to get this far. Um, it's, it's a quick process and it's the kind of thing that you can do whilst you're chatting to other people. You can do it whilst you're sat around a fire. You can do it maybe whilst you're watching the telly. If you can imagine the tribes people who would have tra traditionally have used this method for all of their string and all of their cordage, um, this would have been a winter task that they would have done in the lodge or in their in their huts 
and they would have collected the bark in the summertime when the uh, the energy of the tree is is in the is in the bark and uh, they would have harvested the bark then and they would have stored it and this would have been their kind of their winter project as it were to renew their cordage supply and they'd have been doing this around the fire whilst they were socializing and uh, so I'm going to take this opportunity to explain a bit more about the channel and what I have as a vision for for the outdoor influence and is to bring entertainment to people but also bring some meaningful conversation um, and to share skills and information basically um, and this is this each video will have um, a guest who and initially these guests are going to just be my friends and family who I am inspired by and um, the kind of the basis of the conversation or the interview will be to um, understand how the outdoors has had an influence on their life either through their work through their spiritual practice through their adventures and, and free time um, and uh, one of my other passions is cooking and uh, cooking on a fire is something that I really enjoy and so um, there will be an element of creating food uh, preparing some food and creating a meal and um, and so we will do that together and um, another element of the video will be a shared activity so um, an outdoor activity that we will do together maybe it'll just be a walk maybe it will be um, a bike ride or or climbing or swimming and um, and so it will incorporate many things and uh, it'll hopefully be visually pleasing it will be uh, informative and just basically something fun to watch and I look forward to making them I look forward to connecting with my friends again I look forward to uh, sharing the skills that I have uh, I guess developed or um, learnt over the years and, and hopefully hopefully inspire people to get outside um, and enjoy the, the many benefits that playing in the outdoors has so um, so watch this space uh, like I said earlier in the video this is just a, a practice run um, and uh, I'm using it as an opportunity to uh, practice explaining things on a video and working out how to film things I mean uh, I have very limited tech and um, and my helper is my uh, eight-year-old daughter behind the camera so it might be a little shaky it's her first gig as a camera operator and um, so that's that's my vision for the channel and hopefully yeah hopefully it'll be enjoyable and hopefully you will join us and hopefully it will entertain so basically you can just go on for as long as you need and um, the different willow barks will have different um, strengths so work out what the what your cordage is capable of I aim to uh, make a bow drill using this and my feeling is that this will be too thin to use as a bow drill I don't think it will be hard wearing so what you can do is you can do the same process with your twisted cordage and you repeat the process again so you start in the middle and you twist until you get the, that kink and then you repeat the process so you, you then turn it from being a two strand cord into a four strand cord and depending on your use of the cord cordage you can keep doubling it up so what I've done here it's, this started off as being quite a long piece of, of single cordage or two strand cordage and I've twisted it up to be eight strand cordage so that is doubled over twice and you can see the different ends there 
So um, I'm going to carry on experimenting with this, but this is all you need to know to get going with your cordage. I'm going to double this up and I will um, attempt a bow drill with it, with it doubled up. Um, and in the future I want to see if I can make a cordage, a natural cordage that um, can take my body weight. So being a climber and a tree surgeon, ropes, in uh, that's my application of ropes mostly is, is as a um, as a way to ascend something or descend something and so I'm intrigued to see if I can make a, a natural cordage um, using uh, uh, that, will, that will hold my body weight so that's going to require a really long piece so I'll need about a meter I reckon about a meter of cordage to uh, be able to tie into a harness or to tie around something um, which will mean I'll probably need about 30 meters of this because I'll need 30, 30 odd, 32 strand cordage I reckon to be strong enough to take my body weight. So I'm going to need to make 30 meters of this to double it over and double it over and double it over and double it over to make cordage that is that strong. So um, I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, hopefully at the end of this video you will see the, um, the bow drill. Um, and so thanks for watching uh, I hope this has been informative to you and uh, like I said earlier this is this is the first step on our little journey to um, to setting up a, an outdoor video blog um, it will also be available as a podcast so watch out for in your podcast um, where you wherever you get your podcasts from um, and uh, yeah, so subscribe if you liked it. Give us a like if you liked it. And um, yeah, thanks for being here. So last night I tried the uh, the cordage, but um, unfortunately it snapped. So uh, it withheld for a little while, but then um, when I was loading the uh, the spindle into the bow, uh, it just snapped. Um, I don't know whether it's where I've joined in some of the fibers or if the fibers themselves have snapped, but uh, it um, it didn't last. Uh, that's part of the learning. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to keep working at it and uh, I guess I'll post another another video in the future but um, yeah, it's part of learning, part of remastering an old skill um, and uh, yeah, uh, hopefully one day it'll be a, a successful uh, successful bow drill uh, cordage so um, thanks for being with us and I'll uh, catch you next time.